Media Central Cloud UX provides a complete journalist toolset working in a web browser and even working remotely, all the way from ingest through to publication. On the left, I have access to systems for script writing, video graphics, and archive. And along the top, I have the different workflow-related apps that I need to use to get my job done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload some clips to the system. I can do that in Media Central Cloud UX using the File Ingest app, which is this icon here. I could use the Ingest app to upload clips from a camera card, for example. Media Central also supports baseband ingest, and I can do things like edit while capture. So let's open it up. I'm going to choose some files that I have on my local machine. And I'm going to open these files up. All I need to do now is to pick a profile and start the job. While this is processing, I can start writing my story and I can do that in the Rundown app. The Rundown app is where you can prepare your stories for a broadcast show, for example. So in the Rundown app, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a story. Let's give the story a name. I'm also going to give it what's called a video ID. Now I'm going to write my story. The Media Central Cloud UX lets me not just write the story, but also edit video as well. So I'm going to create a sequence linked to this story. I can do that by clicking on this button here. So that then creates for me a blank sequence. I can also then open up the timeline view, which is here. Now let's get the shots from the edit. I'm going to do that by using the search app. So in the search app here, I can open up and I'm just going to apply a quick filter for the last 10 minutes. And there I can see my shots, plus of course the sequence that I've edited. Now, what I'm gonna do just now is I'm just gonna dock the search app here at the left-hand side of the screen. And I'm gonna go back to my rundown app here as well. Okay, let's begin to do some editing. If I want to view the footage here, just double click, launches it into the video player. And now what I can do, of course, is I can scroll through the shots. I can play the shots back if I want to do that. And I can also then edit the shots into the timeline. So here I'm just going to mark an in point and an out point. I don't want to go to the cut of the next shot. Let's just stick with here. And then all I need to do is drag and drop into the timeline. Now you'll see in the timeline I have got one video and two audio tracks, but I'm not limited to that. I can add additional video tracks. I can add additional audio tracks. I could have up to four video tracks and I could have up to eight audio tracks. These audio tracks could of course be used for voiceover, they could be used for music, uh, depending on what your particular workflow is. Now I'm just gonna leave it as one video and two audio tracks for the purposes of what I'm doing just now, but let's have a look at another shot. Now here I'm using the mouse to control things, but I could also use the keyboard to do this. So I could use, uh, you know, JK and L to do this. So I can use L to spin through faster than real time. I can use a J to spin back through. I can use, you know, K to pause the shot as well. Let me just go back to, to the start. And this time I'm gonna use, you know, I to mark an endpoint. Let me play through the shot a little bit. Quite like this, this pan that we have here. Maybe let's stop it around about there and mark that as an out point. Now again, I can either use the keyboard to add this to the timeline, B on the keyboard would add this shot in, or again, I can drag and drop. So let's just drag and drop into here. Okay, so there we've got a couple of shots in the timeline. Let's just have a look at this final one here. So again, here a slightly wider shot of the boat. So let's take a little bit of that. So this time, Again, just mark an in and an out. So let's just go to the end here and then just B on the keyboard will add the shot in. I can also zoom in on the timeline by just using the up and down arrows on the keyboard so I can see things. And let's just review these shots as I've put them together. So I think this shot's maybe a little bit long. So I can just right click on here and I can choose to trim the top or trim the tail of the shot. So that's just gonna cut the shots from there. 
And now, of course, I can select my other shots that I have in the timeline and I can just bring them back across here. Now, if you remember, this shot here is a little pan that goes across the shot and then we come to the other shot here. So I want to go and actually put a dissolve in here. So using Media Central Cloud UX, I can apply a dissolve to both the video uh, and the audio tracks. I can choose whether I want to have this centered, starting at the cut, ending at the cut, or of a custom duration. And let's just leave it as it is. And that's just going, then just going to give me a nice little mix to go from the pan to the wider shot. So let's have a look at that. So, okay, so one of the next things I could do here, of course, is I could add graphics. But how do I do that in Media Central Cloud UX? So a couple other things to show you here. One is I can open up this panel and this then gives me access to the audio. So this is where if I wanted to, I could go into voiceover mode, I could record a voiceover. I can also adjust the audio levels here as well. But I also have this graphics panel. Now, something else that you can also do with Media Central Cloud UX is you can move this panel around. So let me pop this up here because that's going to give me a bit more uh, screen real estate to use for my graphic. Now, all I need to do is go into my Browse app here and I can access my Maestro News system. So Maestro News is uh, the graphic system that I have here. I've got some templates that are already set up. So let's just go and add in a lower third here. So when I double click, it then brings up the lower third template. This one I can choose to have it as one line uh, or two lines. So let's just make it two lines here. So I can fill in what I want to have, but more than that, I can also render out a preview. So let's just do that. So when I render out the preview, I can then preview the graphic with the animation. You see here it has a wipe on and also it then has a wipe off. But ideally what I'd like to do here is I'd like to view this in context with the video. That's no problem. I can simply drag and drop it into the timeline and you can see here that I can now add the graphic into the timeline. And now I can play back my sequence and I can view the graphic together. So let's just hide this panel for a second so I see it a bit better and then just play the graphic back. So there is the wipe on with the animation and of course then is the wipe off. So I can position the graphic, you know, anywhere I want um, in the timeline. I can also make it a little bit longer and shorter. And then let's play it back here. So there you can see the wipe on and the wipe off. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make this ready for publication. So how do I do that? Because I want to have this with the graphics actually burned into the timeline itself. All I need to do here is save this, and then I can trigger a background process to actually do this. So you can see here, I have the option to burn the graphics in. Let me just choose the right profile and then click on send. With graphics, I also have the choice of playing them out in the studio using an application such as Maestro News. So what I'm going to do now is let's find the sequence that has the rendered graphics so I can use them for publication. Again, to do that, I'm just going to open up the search again. And this time I'm just going to do another filter for the last 10 minutes. And there you now see I have the sequence called the Story Demo Edit Render. And you'll see when I open this up, I now have the graphics which are actually rendered as part of the video. We also see here the rendered media for the effect that I've added, the dissolve. So now what I want to do is publish this. So how do I do that? Here I have access to what's called Media Central Publisher. So let's open up this app. So in Media Central Publisher, all I need to do here is drag my sequence in and the Media Central Publisher interface is going to open up. So I'm going to close down my video player and my timeline here. So now that I'm in Media Central Publisher, the quickest way to publish is simply to select a template. 
So I can go in here, you see there are a variety of different templates that I can choose for. I want to publish this both to Twitter and to YouTube and applying a template automatically can add graphics. It can also automatically add in uh, what's called a pre-roll and a post-roll. This of course could be things like station branding, uh, stuff like that as well. I also have the option here of adding additional graphics called dynamic overlays. I can add static text. I can also add additional images here as well. Now, because I'm publishing to both YouTube and Twitter, then I have to fill out some information, of course. So this is the post for Twitter. Because I'm posting to YouTube, I can, of course, add in a description. I can also add tags, for example. There's other functionality in Media Central Publisher where I could publish in square video or vertical video as well. But all I need to do now is hit the publish button. So in Media Central Publisher, I then get some feedback. It tells me here that the sequence is now importing. This is importing into a rendering engine which is running in the cloud to actually publish this content out. It's also worth pointing out in Media Central Publisher that I can also upload content from external systems. Say you've edited something in Premiere or a standalone media composer, I can also choose here to upload files. These could be videos, could be images, and I can use them in Media Central Publisher. You see now the status is changing to show me it's published. If I go back into the clip, I also now get the option of viewing the clip on the particular platforms. So let's have a look at it on Twitter. So there is the pre-roll that I added. And there are the additional graphics which are part of the template. So that's looking at the post on Twitter. Let's look at it on YouTube. And there again are the animated graphics as part of the template. And there's the graphics I added in Maestro. So let's just recap. I've used Media Central Cloud UX to ingest some material. I've then written my script. I've used the search app to find the material I need. And I've then edited my sequence and added Maestro graphics, which I've then rendered out and burned into the timeline. I've then taken my sequence and put it into Media Central Publisher. I've then used it to publish using a template to both YouTube and Twitter simultaneously. I can also post to other destinations such as Facebook or to a web CMS system. And I've done all of that using Media Central Cloud UX running in a browser and also running remotely. So that's how I can use Media Central Cloud UX to provide a complete journalist toolset.